After the months we've just had, Zoom calls, working from home, cues and masks, rules, restrictions, confusion and conflict, we're trying hard to bury the fatigue we feel behind our Zoom smile, checking our camera to see the image others see, appearing to listen, but in reality quite distant. We're so over it. The reality is our world is dark. Communities and families are divided, Loneliness covers many like a blanket that smothers the joy we should be feeling this Christmas Eve. We need a glimmer of hope. We need something to change. Or do we actually need something that is constant and unchanging? In that little town of Bethlehem, something significant really did happen. 
the baby named Jesus came into the world to show love like no one had ever experienced before. Jesus doesn't change. His love isn't restricted or conditional. It never has been and it never will be. Through him, we can find peace in troubled times. We can experience a deep joy that is beyond our understanding and embrace the future with hope. It's in the darkest places, the light shines brightest. Jesus, the light has come.
2,000 years ago, with hay for a cradle, was someone born in the dirty old stable. This was the day, the greatest of them all, where the Son of God was born in a cattle stall. He became the lowest of the lows and took upon himself life's harshest blows. The Son of God, born as a man, so that we may live as sons of God can. He chose to be wrapped in swaddling clothes so that we may be wrapped in his righteous robes. Christ wants to be a brother, a friend, and not just a name, a friend who laid down his life and bore our shame. This is the day that divided our history, according to God's will revealed the mystery. He was born so that he may die for the sins of every man, and man's salvation through the resurrection was God's great plan. Christmas is not about the gifts that are wrapped underneath the tree, but about the greatest gift who hung on the tree. The world was covered in darkness and was jaded. He is the light of the world, and the darkness was invaded. So that men may be born again and never die, let there be light and let the Father be glorified. For God so loved the world, he gave the world Jesus, a gift. He stretched his arms on the cross so that he could close the rift. It is joy to the world and reason for celebration to reconcile the creator to his creation. Just sing and hear.
At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the glory of God surrounded them, and they were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Saviour said, Yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angel had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby, lying in a manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them.
C is for celebrating Christmas with cards, carols, and candy canes. Yum, yum. <laughs> H is for holidays at the beach. Happiness when we get together with our family and friends and having to help clean up. R is for reindeer, like Rudolph with a red nose. Real Christmas trees and really cool flashing lights. <laughs> I is for the innkeeper who gave his stable for Jesus to be born. It is also for Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. This is for shepherds who came to the stable to share in the wonderful celebration when Jesus was born. T is for tents, so traditions on thankfulness because Jesus coming to earth transformed the whole world. M is for Christmas music. Magi, that's the wise men and the memories we make together. A is for angels, amazing decorations and all the food I'm allowed to eat. Especially when it's a buffet. We can help ourselves. S is for our Savior, who came as a baby that very first Christmas. A gift from God to the whole world, and that's super special. People walking in darkness 
have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. My family loves Christmas lights. We like to drive around the areas of our city this time of the year and look at the houses and streets that are lit up in spectacular ways. Christmas is full of lights. It's bright ones, flashing ones, lights of different colors and different shapes. And like many others, we hang lights on our Christmas tree. We hang lights around our house with candles burning in our home. Have you ever stopped and wondered, why do lights feature so prominently at Christmas time? Well, much of the reason is because this concept of light comes up really frequently in the Christmas story. I've jotted down a few references here to give you a bit of an idea. For instance, when the angels speak to the shepherds, it's in the black of night, and we're told the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. It was at night that Joseph uh, is told that, that Mary will have a, have a child through a miraculous birth. We're told that the Magi who were searching for the newborn king followed the bright star. You can think too of, of Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, who, who said this about Jesus while well, Jesus was still in Mary's womb. This is the morning light from heaven that's about to break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide us to the path of peace. And when a man named Simeon saw Jesus presented as a little baby in the temple, it was Simeon who declared, he is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. Now that's just some of them, but there are a whole bunch of references here to do with the birth of Jesus. And 700 years earlier, there was a prophet named Isaiah who spoke about the baby to be born. We heard the verses he wrote earlier, where he said, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And just prior to that, there is this allusion to light, where Isaiah says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. And when Isaiah penned these words, he was bringing hope to a people where hope was in short supply. They were trapped in what he describes here as a land of deep darkness. You see, at the time, there was national trauma. There was disaster, despair. It was a, it was a grim time. And the people were afraid. And so Isaiah uses this image of deep darkness to describe the anxious and difficult times the people were experiencing. Many of us might describe what we've been experiencing in a very similar way. It's been deep darkness. And many times we've been stumbling around in the dark, unsure of what's in front of us, trying to make sense of it all. Without any light, we get disoriented. We get confused, unsettled. We, we fumble around trying to make sense of each object, where we are, where we're going. Isn't that how many of us have felt over these past few months? So let's reflect on this for a moment. In fact, let, let's turn off the lights. And as we do, let's continue to muse about this idea of darkness and light. So your natural reaction right now might be to fiddle with the controls, thinking something's wrong with your device or your screen. It's our instinctive reaction when we can't see what's happening. When things go dark, we're used to taking control or at least trying to take control. And it's in these times that we discover we're not actually in control. We discover our vulnerabilities that we can't see and know exactly what's going to happen day to day. That there are just so, so many unknowns. 
But thankfully, Isaiah has some good news amidst this bleak situation that we find ourselves in as we, as we stumble around in the darkness. Isaiah continues, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Even a little light has a way of causing the darkness to flee. The darkness begins to dissipate. And Isaiah continues in verse 2 of chapter 9. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. And those words were written 700 years before the coming of Jesus. He's saying this child who will be called the Prince of Peace is the one who can come and and help us see. Uh, This is the one who will be the light of the world, the one who can take away our confusion, the one who can bring direction and bring comfort. It's no wonder that Jesus' arrival comes with a bright star leading the Magi to him. That his coming is announced in radiance and the glory of angels who give the good news to the shepherds. Because they're saying he is the light of the world. This is the one who dispels the darkness. As one of his followers named John reflects on this coming of Jesus, he picks up on the same image of light to describe the birth of Jesus. He says, in the beginning, the word already existed. The word is like John's pet name for Jesus. He said the word was with God and the word was God. And the word gave life to everything he created brought life to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the the darkness can never extinguish it. Do you hear what John is saying? The darkness can never extinguish the light. A darkness does not have the last word. Light triumphs over darkness once and for all. In a world of pandemics and terrorism and, and growing anxiety and unknowns, we need the certainty that light wins. In the world of stresses and strains and work and home and life, we we need to know that darkness does not have the last word. Amidst all the disappointments and disruptions and, and darkness, we need to hear that light wins. You see, Christmas is the reminder that the light has already come. It's not that everything will change in the here and now. Later, in fact, John will quote Jesus' words, reminding his disciples of the hard things they will experience and see. And Jesus doesn't promise to shield them or us from the darkness, but he does promise that he has gone before us and has shone the light. And so Jesus says, I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you may have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, Because I have overcome the world. I've overcome the world. I I think we need to hear these words for this season. Uh, When my kids were afraid of the dark, Robin and I would would place a nightlight in their rooms and leave the light on in the hallway. And my kids would yearn for those cracks of light that would would slip across the floor and illuminate the unknown. After all, light demystifies the dark. And Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. And me, you begin to see that you have no reason to fear. You begin to see that I am with you even in the midst of the deep darkness. So I invite you to adjust your eyes to see Emmanuel, God with us. Do you realize he's with you at this very moment by his spirit right where you are? He doesn't dwell in some sacred building. He dwells where you are. That means you're not alone. You never have been. You never will be. It means you have nothing to fear. Even even though you might not be able to see what might happen next month or next year, you have enough light to see that he is with you. Emmanuel, God with us. God providing direction amidst the unknowns of life. Emmanuel, the God who provides comfort and security in the here and now. And every time you see the lights on your Christmas tree or the, or the candle burning in front of you, you can remember that Jesus is the light of the world. And in him, we're able to see again. But you know, sometimes it's possible to have light in front of us 
and you not see. It's what John goes on to say in his first chapter of his gospel. He says, the one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the world that he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. Apparently, many people around Jesus then, just as it is today, were blind and unaware that Jesus is the creator walking among them. They just didn't see it. It's funny, isn't it, how we might see and yet not see. Anthony Doerr received the 2015 Pulitzer Prize for a novel, a work of fiction that was entitled All the Light You Cannot See. And it's a story of a young German soldier and a blind French girl who, who find one another in the chaos of World War II. Uh, Werner, the teenage soldier, has full access to his senses, he, but he lives in this murky, foggy world of, of grey tones and chaos and war and the, and the dimmest of light. In contrast, Marie, the, the young French girl, is blind. But while she doesn't have access to her eyes, she actually sees everything. Her world bursts forth with, with vibrant colors and scents and textures. And while the book isn't a spiritual book, it, it reminds me of the way someone might be able to see with physical eyes, but be blind to what's actually staring them in the face. See, the author of that novel writes, the brain is locked in total darkness. It, it floats in a clear liquid inside the skull, never in the light. And yet the world it constructs in the mind is full of light. It brims with color and movement. So, so how, children, does the brain, which lives without a spark of light, build us for a world full of light? You know, that for me raises a question I want to put to you today. Are you willing to see in a new way? I, I'm not talking just seen with these eyes. I'm talking about the way you see life. Are you willing to look this Christmas in a different way, to open the aperture of your life camera? Are you ready to let the light shine in and bring peace to the chaos of life? Well, how does that happen? Well, immediately after saying that some people couldn't see or recognize Jesus because of their spiritual blindness, John says, but to all who believed him, and accepted him, that's Jesus. He gave the right to become children of God. So the word became human and made his home among us. John says the gateway to really seeing is through accepting Jesus as the one we will follow. To, to allow Jesus to reframe the way we see life and do life. And as we do, we're accepted into a spiritual family. We find life in relationship with Jesus that affects the now and the future. You know, some of you have been fumbling around in the dark, looking for direction for some time. You've been trying to make sense out of, out of all the confusion. Perhaps you, you didn't even realize it at the time, but, but when you look back and you see the experiences you've, you've sought, the decisions you've made about where to live and who to marry and, and why you work, many of them are actually about seeking purpose and fulfillment and identity, uh, ultimately trying to make sense of what you see in life through the lens that you have. And the message of Christmas says, well, we don't need to search. We simply need to receive. So my ask is this. Will you allow Jesus to bring the light into your life so that you can see in a new way? That was a choice I made many years ago on Christmas Eve. I knew the story of Christmas really well, but I also knew it wasn't personal to me. And it was on a Christmas Eve that I chose to make it personal. And I did that by praying a simple prayer that effectively just said, yes, Jesus, I like to have you in my life. I like to follow you. And tonight I still choose to see Jesus as the hope of the world, the one who is able to renew all things. So will you make that choice tonight as well? Maybe like me, you've responded to that invitation some time ago. But perhaps you've lost your way and you've got distracted by all that we've experienced this year. And yet this is the moment to grab hold of the Christmas story anew and allow the light to flood into your life once again. Because darkness never have, has to have the final word. 
And as we're going to sing soon in that classic Christmas carol, O Holy Night, there is a new and glorious morn. And every time you see the Christmas lights blinking and the candles burning around you, remember, Jesus is the light of the world. It's in Jesus that we can now see. It's in relationship with him we realize that darkness will not extinguish the light. Rather, light will spread throughout our homes, our communities, and our entire nation. Because darkness does not have the final word. Light will win. I'd like to lead us in a Christmas prayer. I wonder if you can join with me. Let's pray together. Jesus, this year has been disruptive, to say the least. And so tonight, in this very moment, we say yes to you, Jesus. We want to follow you. We we want to see things the way you see them. Help us see that we have no reason to fear and every reason to rejoice. And may your light extinguish the darkness and shine brightly in our lives, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, that the whole world would know about the hope that is available to them. We declare, Jesus, that you are the light of the world. We adore you, Jesus. Amen.
It's incredible how light spreads. Throughout the world, people will be lighting candles to celebrate Jesus as the light of the world. And they have done so throughout history, even in the midst of wars and political instability and a variety of pandemics. Decade after decade, century after century, all declaring that Jesus is the light of the world. He is the one in whom we can find certain hope wherever we find ourselves and in whatever circumstances that are occurring around us. I love the way that light is able to spread into our lives and and our homes and our neighborhoods, bringing people together wherever we are. So this Christmas, remember that darkness never gets the final word. Rather, light will win. We're so glad you've joined with us to celebrate Christmas with us here at Grace City. And if you're new with us, we'd love to be able to connect with you. You can chat with one of our online hosts or check out our website and social media pages to stay up to date with what's happening. We'll also post a short Christmas Day message available on social media and YouTube from 9 a.m. on Christmas morning. Our next online service is Sunday, 2nd of January. And we'll be kicking off the new year with a series called Sound Bites, gaining wisdom for, for life from the pithy words taken from the book of Proverbs in the Bible. It's a good opportunity to gather with others in your home for our 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. online services. We'll also begin in-person services the very first Sunday of February, and I am looking forward to gathering with you all face-to-face. Meantime, on behalf of our team at Grace City Church, Mere Kira Hemiti, Maniye Lea Kirasimasi, Shengden Kwela, Merry Christmas! And whatever language you are blessed with by God, and may the Christ of Christmas shine forth his light in a new and glorious morning.